nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. Welcome back to the bench, guys. Today I have a video you have been waiting for for quite some time. A while back, I put out a video critiquing the critiques on the Graph Help subreddit. And you guys loved that video. But you told me, Hey, John, they have a, they have a Discord. You need to go there now. And now, we're gonna take a look at their critiques. And with that said, I'm not gonna be too, too harsh on the critique section because any community, no matter how intelligent that community is, when it has a critique section, you're going to get people in there that don't know what they're talking about. Got it down pretty good. The only thing is I would say you don't want little add-ons like the bars and the half circle to be random. He didn't do any random boxes. You have three add-ons on the left side while you only have two on the right side. You want to have the same on both sides, which is not true. Not true at all. In fact, going with five add-ons or extensions is probably much better than having six. And the reason being, and this actually comes from calligraphers and master calligraphers, where they typically put a prime number amount of flourishes on their calligraphy. And you end up learning this in various other art forms as well. The reason you put these details in prime numbers, or the reason you put these kind of like more useless elements, depending on your art form, the reason you put these as prime numbers is because prime numbers automatically balance. So even if you have three on one side and you have two on the other side, it's still dramatic helps balance as opposed to putting three on both sides. While yes, three on both sides certainly sounds more appealing and it certainly sounds more symmetrical, unless you're going for symmetry, it can oftentimes knock things off balance. And the reason being is because both sides aren't symmetrical. So while three may work on this side, it may not work on the other side. And he says you have three add-ons. He really doesn't have three add-ons when we look here. He's got one serif and I forget the terminology. It's not coming into my, I'm having a little bit of a brain fart right now, but there's terminology for when a letter's structure pops out through the other side. And it actually comes from, I believe, just everyday print font as well as calligraphy. As far as the weight, the problem here isn't so much the weight, it's more so the proportions of the R. The R isn't really all apportioned to the I, and the reason for this is because the lowered cap height mixed with the mean line that doesn't really give the bowl of the R enough room to separate from the leg of the R. The leg of the R then becomes compressed as a result of that, and it doesn't have any room to extend, while the I looks like it breathes a lot more. It doesn't look as claustrophobic. So it's less about the weight, more about the negative space management, and the letter structure due to where he positioned the cap height mean line baseline. Not a bad attempt at a critique though, that, that was a pretty good attempt that a critique. Oh, we got a guy doing drop shadow here and he's getting into the science behind it. Some of the drop shadow is wrong. If you're struggling to figure out where drop shadow should go, I've done an MS Paint thing that makes sure drop shadow is always right. If you ever stuck with drop shadow, just do a quick letter and then duplicate it. Well, he's, well, yeah, I mean, does, does this guy, all right, all right, nothing against this guy because there's nothing wrong with teaching somebody using digital software at all. But if you don't understand the science behind how that works, then that tool, the digital software, becomes more of a crutch and you never want that. That's a common theme in artwork where for many artists, for many professional skill level artists, they use tools. This guy is just providing cheats and he doesn't understand the science behind it. So for him, it's a crutch. I actually have a full on tutorial for drop shadow. If anybody's interested, if you guys are struggling with it, be sure to go ahead and check out the tutorial. Draw a bunch of rectangles, geometric shapes. Yes, yes, this critique is good. Something with a defined light source. Yes, yes. What do you mean by, re <laughs> what do you mean by rectangles? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm laughing, I'm not gonna lie, because I get that question a lot when I say basic print font, and people are like, what do you mean basic print font? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> the thing you learned in elementary school maybe? And, and it's funny because it's not that they don't know what that thing is, it's just that they're kind of confused that you're telling them that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's why this dude said, <laughs> <laughs> a four-sided parallelogram. <laughs> oh man, I'm dead. Um, I'm... <laughs> he said anti-style? <laughs> Why'd you have to do him like that, man? He wanted a critique. <laughs> you don't have to... This guy then does the same piece over and says all he could really comment is defining the S more. And let's go back up, and I would agree with him. I mean, there are a lot of other things he could be doing right, but going ahead and adding more definitions to the S is one of those many things. You certainly want to pay attention to where the boxes line up. That would help out 
tons. Like how is this A's structure functioning? This A doesn't quite work. You're not defining the structure because none of the boxes line up anywhere. And the reason it's difficult to not have a closed counter in the A is because the closed counter is kind of what defines all of the structure in the letter A. Without the closed counter, it's gonna be just a little bit difficult in order to define that structure. The middle doesn't line up for a hand like this, it doesn't have to. This is, this is perfectly okay. You see, if they were to go ahead and keep everything at the same height, either the K would have to come all the way down to the A, which would distort the structure and would give them a lot of negative space here at the top, which wouldn't flow with the T, or the A would have to have its horizontal part really high up, which would once again take away the negative space in the closed counter of the A, which we just talked about, how that defines the structure, and as a result, that would distort the structure. So actually, I think it's better that this does not line up in the center. It actually ends up working out pretty well. Schwib, putting your slaps on a mailbox and he has an emo. I'm just here for the T, man. I'm, that's all this critique section is like. This critique section is prime for some good T. And all the cops are idiots, they won't know. That's not even mine. Your tag on your mailbox that will probably be illegally tagged in other places. That's a cluster mailbox. I put it on a random one. Mine is like at the top in the corner. It's, uh, oh my god, it's still in the place you're staying living. It's hella down the street, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, don't, don't worry, guys, don't worry. The, the cops, they won't bother looking just down the street. Oh, sweet, you live up the road, no worries. <laughs> uh, cops are stupid, okay? <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this is the best. I love this Discord. This is amazing. You guys said the Discord was better and you guys weren't wrong. It is absolutely hilarious. This is their boot camp they have. If this links back to their Reddit tutorial stuff, this, th this is bad. Like the critique section had some pretty decent critiques and some that weren't all that great, but they weren't too, too horrendous. It wasn't like blatant lies being said. It was just a little couple things that were off here and there, but the tutorials are not good. They are filled to the brim with misinformation. I'd like to share some color schemes of people having problems. While this may seem tempting in order to go ahead and pull color schemes, you know, pre-made for you, I don't recommend doing that unless you already understand how color functions. And the reason I say this is because in art, if you don't understand the science behind something, then you end up using that thing as a crutch. But if you understand the science behind the, that topic, then you can use these sorts of things as a tool. So for anybody who doesn't understand color theory, you're not going to have any incentive to learn color theory because you're just gonna come here and then do a piece that has these colors in it thinking that you don't have to learn anything and then later down the road when you try to do another piece and you have you know for example a red and a green can you're gonna go ahead and use those together not realizing that man this red's a little bit different than the one you had before and so is the screen and these two that you have now are the same value and red and green of the same value same saturation do not go together but you wouldn't know that unless you learned color theory that's why I highly recommend it never using stuff like this. And anyone, absolutely anybody who gives you a cheat or an easy method of finding something, they say, if you watch somebody's tutorial and they say, hey, check it out, use this color scheme generator or maker or use this X, Y, and Z thing that does it for you, that person has no clue what they're talking about and you can now ignore the rest of that person's information because they clearly have no idea how to teach and they clearly do not understand that topic for themselves. Week four, extensions, add-ons, throwies. Oh, this is gonna be good. First, you write your letters. The T is a little big here, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. Throw a few flourishes to fill the empty spaces and keep flow going, but they haven't explained flow. Maybe they explained it in previous class, I don't know, but in this tutorial, they have not explained flow. I added an entirely new bar connected to the letter. The connection itself is already presented in the E, thus it adds symmetry overall. Yeah, but the E... No, 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 that's all I can say, is no, no, I, oh my goodness. <sighs> Alright, let me continue. Hold up. Let's see. You can see I borrowed lines from other letters to make shapes that were kind of already there. That makes sense. That's actually really good. Definitely do that. That increases letter uniformity and similarity. That is what you want. That's a good tip. Definitely listen to that part. The first part about the extensions he was talking about, please never do that. I will explain why in a second. Now you just go up, clean, uh, you know, clean things up, and you have depth. 
No, you don't. Okay, so number one, this does not work. He's trying to add letter uniformity from the E's extension here in red to the T's extension over here. But the issue with this is not only is he breaking the T's structure by doing this, but this extension is fundamentally different from the E. He doesn't realize that the E's extension right here is something that you'll actually see in other font-based art forms. It ends up being derivative of the actual structure, which is why this lowercase E's extension functions properly. But the T never has anything like this. Never does the T have something that swings out the, to the left and then shoots straight down longer than the T itself. What? <laughs> <laughs> the T's actual structure is smaller than the extension. That doesn't make sense. What we're seeing here is a really shoehorned extension to desperately try to have letter uniformity and similarity function and to fix negative space management. He clearly said in the beginning that the T is really, really large. So clearly it's something that he was having issues with as he couldn't find a better way to do this T. And due to this fact, he overstylized the T to compensate, adding a lot of stuff to it that didn't need to be there and added an extension that quite frankly has no business being in this piece at all. He should not be teaching this class on extensions. Cut dry and simple, he really shouldn't. Anyway guys, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I do have to say, you guys said that the Discord was better than the Reddit, and I have to agree. The Discord is better than the Reddit. You'll certainly find misinformation here as well, but like I said in the beginning of the video, you'll find misinformation in any community critique area. What I was more concerned about was the Reddit had a lot of misinformation as far as the tutorials were concerned being pushed out directly from the people in charge. And this isn't much different. This also has a lot of misinformation and a lot of bad information as well, as far as the actual tutorials are concerned. But the critiques are pretty decent. You just have to understand when somebody's giving you a bad critique, because although there's not a ton, there are a couple here and there. Overall, not bad. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, let me know in the comments down below. And feel free to hit the like button. It helps out these videos a ton. If you'd like some more content, we have a bunch of videos that should be popping up on your screen. And we're actually going to be live on Twitch, working on some graffiti as well. So if you have any questions or anything you want to ask me about graffiti, feel free to jump on over there. i got a link in the description. For anybody who's new here, feel free to subscribe. And become part of the smartest graffiti community online with the most credible information. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.